month, an article titled How Chinese Female for Chinese female to have freedom in dressing soon spread quickly on WeChat platform. In nearly one day, August the 12th, it got 5 million views and over 100,000 likes and comments. I have no intention to comment on the article, but it poses an interesting question. Why are we concerned so much about dressing? There must be a reason behind its popularity and fermenting emotion. Show has always been a major social discipline imposed on women since, since patriarchal society has been established. Consequently, males are judged more by their social values, their property and network, and females are judged more by their body values, appearance, fear, which could be generalized by sexual attraction. And in this sense, females are materialized as placings. Um, so social discipline is a way to exercise and maintain power. What's horrible about social discipline is that it's like air around us. We live in it, yet we are not aware of it. Only through looking at history, we could get a glance at its power. Dressing of women specifically has been wielded as a tool by both men and women, some for confinement and some for liberation. And we must be familiar to this. Foot binding first appeared in Song Dynasty and became popular in Ming Dynasty. At that time, it was praised as three-inch golden lotus or centenarian. To see a modern light, we must find it ugly, painful, and sick. But aesthetics could be mani manipulated as a tool and is changed with time. Regarding food binding, it apparently confines women's mobility and third scope of activity. Without people's awareness, it caters to patriarchal society's rule that women should stay at home. Um, when talking about social norms, we cannot avoid the involvement of coercion, encouragement, inducement, and finally voluntary. To illustrate this point, imagine you were a girl in the dynasty. When you were a little girl, your mother began to bind your feet. This process needs a few months. It's so painful each time she tightens your binding that you cry loudly, and it smells bad to not wash your feet for a dozen days. However, she's a mother. Will you follow her? She told you food binding makes you beautiful, and as you grow up, you see your friends at your age compare their most up-to-date and fashionable shoe styles. You hear your pursuers praise you for your nice small feet. And you read poems written by most prominent poets to complement the beauty of foot binding. Finally, you accept it and believe in it and take part in it. When you force your daughter to bind her feet, you already became part of the system, and it's unconscious, it's like structuration. This is how social discipline works. Football has already become history, but this kind of mechanism never fails. The pursuit of slender waste, the criticism, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. The pursuit of slender waste, though criticized, still play with body. As a sexual innuendo, slender waist allows women to show its contrast with breast and hip. And waist to hip ratio has been a measure of body aesthetics. Corset made by raw bones was used to slim the waist, make it conform to fashion. It's desirable for both women and men in a time period in history. However, look at how damaging it is to the body. It squeezes your ribs and organs. How can women breathe when they spy only 16 inches per set? 
Some women were so tightly born that they could only breathe with their top part of their lungs. Obviously, it's damaging to health and less than such injury. However, it's a sad story when I searched for said on Google. The first two results appeared are advertisement on Percent products. The pursuit of skin was still produced today. And let's take a look at some famous factors in shaping girls' perspective and figure. Um, these new processes have been generations of collective memory and dream. We all loved it when we were children. Yet we can look back when we grow up and see how these movies have certain effects on our values, on aesthetics. And these pictures, the princesses' waist were adjusted to normal. A study conducted by Penn State University showed that the median waist to hip ratio of Disney princesses was ridiculously slow, 0.5 to 5. To give you a clear understanding, Marilyn Monroe and Audrey Hepburn had the ideal ratio of 0.7, and Disney princesses with two hip ratio is even lower than the Barbie doll, which is 0.56. What's more, implicitly, these animated movies transmit to young girls the message that beautiful is good, which is problematic for young girls. Well, they voluntarily achieve this quote, choose to work for that when they, when they grow up. After watching the Disney movies and playing Barbie dolls, and so we must not underrate the manipulating power of hints. When coercion, encouragement, and inducement are vaguely and subtly mingled together, can we still insist that it's our free will to choose whatever we want to dress? And though nowadays women in most places already hold their freedom dressing, which I mean legal freedom, still some women voluntarily choose to wear corsets. And the same mechanism is true for high heels. I only thought I would have you today. And dressing has been utilized for the liberation of women also. From the 20th century, every appearance of a new style of women's dressing was the expression of confrontation to the patriarchal society. And the first picture shows in the 20s channel that the trend of modern beauty which allowed women to show their curve. Previously, women's dressing were all down to the ankle. Second picture shows in the 60s. First, first lady Jacqueline wearing skirts, which were shows the state of this fashion. And besides, pants were the privilege of men for quite a long time in history. The invention of bicycle actually helped a lot in liberating females from home and widen their scope of activity. In American Civil War, Mary Walker, who served in the army as a sergeant, was arrested several times for conviction of wearing pants. She strongly opposed to women's long skirts with numerous petticoats, not only for their discomfort, but also their inhibition to the wearer's mobility and the spread of dust and dirt. Until the 60s, the smoking set a revolution on women fashion and pioneered the use of pants for women. And it's the chronicle of women's dressing changing. Finally, I want to share the quote of Dr. I. Thomas with you. What people perceive as real things are real in their consequences. What I want to tell you is that the first thing in the first thing important in liberating our dressing is to liberate our mind. We live in a world full of connections and can hardly isolate ourselves from this society. While we derive strength from positive interactions, we are also exposed to comments and judgment by others. Complete free will is so hard to achieve that we could only wish it. 
Yet because of the hardness, we must endeavor to move forward. Hope all of us could possess the biggest freedom that is being awake. Questioning what you have been used to, you could, you could also be an agent of change. That's what I think. <laughs>